set up. Ah, okay. We are now. Well we are now live. There we go. First oh, ever. <laughs> Maybe one thing that might take us a little while to uh, colossal. Set up. Okay. We are now. Well we are now live. <laughs> All right. First ever. <laughs> Maybe one thing that might take us a little while to uh, colossal. Set up. Okay. We are now. Well we are now live. <laughs> Right. Okay. We've got it playing everywhere. <laughs> so, um, can you you guys can hear me on Zoom? I think we have to not watch ourselves on Facebook. Um, yep. Yeah, don't worry. I'll keep an eye on the Facebook feed. Okay. For us. Okay. Good. So, now that we've got that settled out on our very first Facebook Live. Um, we are just going to answer some questions about the practicum so that people out there that are interested in the Tundi practicum can find out a little bit more about your experience because that's what matters to us is the, how the, the singers experienced it, you know, um, just for the people out there that don't know, I'm Jenna Ray. This is Hugh Keelan. We are the founders of Tundi um, and we run the Tundi practicum. And um, we, you know, we had, there's a description on the website about what the practicum is and what it isn't. And, um, but what's really important to us is the value that uh, the singers got out of their participation with us. So uh, without further ado, the first question is, so it's been three months since the practicum. What has been the difference that it has made, participating in the practicum has made in your life as a singer. And you can introduce yourself when you, before you talk. Um, I'll go first. Hi, I'm Rachel Davies. Um, uh, so as soon as you guys, like a couple of things first saying, like it's been three months and it feels like it's been like a year, um, just in terms of like the amount of things that have changed uh, since August. Um, there's like really obvious things or like small stuff like signing up for German lessons because that seems like it's it's the right direction to go uh, after talking with Wendy. Um, so like there's kind of the sense of you learn from your counterparts. There's learning entirely new rep, um, uh, which is just really exciting. So I'm currently working on Ariadne, um, which I think when we zoomed like maybe nine months ago when I first met uh, Hugh and Jenna, I was kind of talking about like, oh, well, you know, in the future, I'd really like to think about this or in the future, I'd maybe like to look at these these kind of things. Um, and just kind of the confidence of saying no right now. <laughs> um, start looking at it, start learning it um, and having kind of that sense of ownership. But for me, honestly, the biggest difference was just kind of knowing who I am as a singer. Uh, I started out the program kind of still uncertain. I had recently switched like Fox, um, like from mezzo to soprano, although like in the course of this, I hope everyone's going to share the renaming of our respective Fox that we all <laughs> had during the program. Um, so now I'm singing more dramatic soprano where I put my real Fox is no, um, where you have the thing that makes you really happy and then someone takes it away from you. Um, and suddenly I realized that like all the characters that I really wanted to play and that felt amazing to sing and that just like I, I would hear someone else singing it and I'm like, oh, that's that, that one's mine. Um, came came with that like integrity of sound, but also integrity of like humanity that the, the human person that I wanted to, to play fits with who I am and my body and how I wanted to sing. And I don't know, just the permission to trust that was the biggest difference for me. Thanks, Rachel. Who else wants to answer that question? <laughs> I can go. Um, so my name is Jeremy Harris. And for me, the practicum has really opened my eyes in, in regard to who I actually am as a person and as a singer as well. Um, I really enjoyed explore, exploring different avenues and different ways that I choose to think about music and redefine it, redefine it in 
I guess for me, um, I used to have this viewpoint that classical music or just music in general is just a black and white thing, but there's so much gray area to it. And just because I sound like a mezzo doesn't mean that I am a mezzo or if I sound like a soprano, that means I am a soprano. Um, I think I'm just a ball of grayness, but also I am shedding light. <laughs> on everyone and myself as well. Um, I think for me, the main thing that I learned was just to be myself and to not cater to anybody's projections, opinions, and just to be happy. And I'm very appreciative of the participants in the practicum because they helped me realize that, um, that I'm great and that everyone else is great and we still have a lot of learning to do, but I am willing to open myself up to new ideas and new perspectives with everything. That is all. Yay. Is that Randy? Um, my practicum experience was very focused on claiming artistic autonomy or adulthood. Um, coming away from the gatekeepers or waiting for permission to do things and just deciding what one wants to do as an artist and doing it. So I am currently uh, making plans to produce my own show in in the spring. Um, I have heard some auditions and I have, I'm looking for, I have a maybe venue and then a couple other things in mind and it is slowly coming together, but I have found some, some mentors locally who are willing to help me and guide me with this new, project and um, it's slightly overwhelming and very, very exciting. But I am feeling confident that it's going to happen. Um, and just generally more confident in myself and my choices, like my repertoire, my approach to things, my plans going forward. Yeah, I, I can agree totally with that idea that um, you feel more confident in what you decide. Um, so knowing it's really hard in this job, especially as a singer with a dramatic voice, I would say at any age, it's hard to know um, what's the right role for me right now? What's the right direction for me right now? And you're going to get so many different things said to you and one of the biggest differences through the practicum was that we were saying them to ourselves it wasn't a case of anything being told to us from outside it was a case of actually what do i want and what, where do i want to go with it which gives you so much more confidence in the choices that you then go on to make so yeah i would definitely agree i think everyone's touched on that a little bit so it's definitely given me that confidence I just want to um, I want to uh, follow up on Rachel's Fach <laughs> comment. So we had a day where we were just being silly and we're like renaming our Fachs. Um, and then after the practicum, I started working on Electra. And after doing Brunhilde, I decided my new Fach is I have daddy issues. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my Fach for this fall. <laughs> See, it just makes sense. It's the it's the characters. It just makes sense. <laughs> fits. <laughs> Maybe I'll work out something while I'm doing that. <laughs> so what, um, and, and Hugh, you can, you can chime in on this one too. Oh, I have to pl plug my Mac in so it doesn't die. That would be good. Um, the, the practicum is kind of hard to describe to people because it doesn't have a curriculum. 
um, which people are like, well, why am I paying to come do this thing that doesn't have a curriculum? Um, but we really do tailor it for the people that are there in the room in front of us. Um, and so I'm curious if you can uh, describe in your own words what the practicum is. Uh, predictably, I, I can go first. Hey. <laughs> so, um, so this is this is the first thing I will say is like every every one of the practicum days starts and ends with a conversation. Um, and in those conversations, I had a tendency of talking first. <laughs> um, just that was a, a thing that happened. Um, so we'd start each day kind of um, with a focal point or with a set of questions um, that we were going to be thinking about throughout the day, everything ranging from like, uh, what are your roadblocks? What are the current dialogues you have about yourself, your career, your artistry? Um, to later on, what is your brand? How do you perceive yourself? How do other people perceive you? Um, and not in a sense of like, oh, how can I shunt myself into a space to make myself more marketable, but in the sense of how do you read authentically? Um, so we have that conversation like over coffee or breakfast at, uh, on the porch and then uh, we spend the morning or most of the day uh, singing and listening to other people sing, um, which was great where we did kind of in, like for our round week all kind of were doing very um, internally like focused things. So there was a lot of more like solo singing, um, but performer to performer, the focal points of that were completely different. So for me, I kind of knew some of the songs that I wanted to be working on and then I, and I kind of knew that, for instance, I had some Verity pieces that like, I knew I loved singing them, but I hadn't figured out the characters. And so very like on the first day, Hugh's statement was like, great. So I think we should sing this every day. Um, so I should sing Pache Pache or Pace Pace Mayo Dio um, every day and just kind of see where that went. And then from there, I was also learning a new aria from Ariadne and coaching uh, various other, other pieces. Um, and so, in my experience that singing part of it was exactly what wendy said where it's not necessarily you're getting told do this differently this is the correct way to do this this is the incorrect way to do this but just having the opportunity in a huge space and with intelligent and supportive and like like just the most loving environment possible getting to make choices and kind of trusting your own ability to read the room of like did that land the way that i wanted it to um and that kind of which like as jenna's saying the like lack of curriculum i think i kind of i'm a teacher in my other life um i'm really used to a little bit more curricular expectations of like okay this is the objective and we hit the objective got it um and in this situation it kind of in, in the practicum what what our objective was was building faith in our our own artistic sensibilities and our own artistic choices and that required both the challenge of people who know what they're hearing. So for instance, there were like days where um, I don't know, there was a day where, where Jeremy was like, I don't think that's landing. Um, and then I got to make choices about how I how I dealt with whether or not like my choices were landing. Um, there were days where the challenge was that sounded too easy. Can you make it sound more like you were actually screaming at God? Um, and then figure out what exactly that meant to me um, rather than having the, okay, can you modify and tweak these, each of these teeny tiny things so that it's a lot more about trusting your ability to, to make choices and interpret those choices and also your ability to say no to things, which was very fun. And then at the end of the day, we close it with another conversation. That was my experience of the practicum for the most part. Anyone else have an answer to that? I just want to uh, interject just a couple of, uh, uh, logistical thing. So the practicum takes place in the Latches Theater, um, which is amazing. It's a 750 seat theater, which we do the festival in. That's where our main stage productions are. Um, but during the practicum, we have access to that theater during the days. So we have it from basically 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. Um, we may have it for some evenings. Um, this year, we decided that we didn't want, the participants didn't want a performance component, but if next year participants want to do 
um, a midday or an evening concert, we can, you know, arrange that. It really is arranged about around the people that are coming. <laughs> so, um, and, and um, there were five participants last year. Um, all five of them stayed in the Latches Hotel, which is in the same building as the theater. So the Latches uh, uh, does give uh, performers a break. Um, so the, especially during the, the week rate will be much less than it normally is. Um, and it's just kind of fun to like live and work in a building with a big theater, I think so. Um, that's just, I, I have a comment on that because yeah. that was one of the huge, um, it was a huge relief when things were getting intense, when things were challenging or the personal growth was a little overwhelming to be able to take a step back and go up to my room and be alone for a minute and know that I could come back down and listen to other people and, and jump right back in when I was ready, but the freedom to have that space was really super important. Thanks. I've got a comment about yeah. the, the latches first. So of course, th those of us who are on kind of the panelists on this Zoom, we all know our own experience of, um, uh, of this place in Brattleboro called the Latches Theatre. Uh, so it's it's for those who don't know it's it's, it's very beautiful kind of Hellenic neoclassical from the 30s feel and look to it with statuary and frescoes for heaven's sake and um, uh, some really extraordinary work in it and very much to the point of why people might be interested in the practicum and singers please add your comments to this it's a highly favorable acoustic environment for um a, uh, for, for a large voiced singer uh with either an orchestra behind them or a piano but behind them right so it's it's not a swimming pool it's not a church nor is it the type of dry acoustic that you have to sort of battle to get your communication more than a few feet away from you it's 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 kind of i would say as a non-singer here I, I i would say it's kind of an ideal thing for the type of voices that you are and we are looking to attract to join us. I just want to jump in and say James has sent us um, a hi to everyone. He, hi, he didn't have a question. He just wanted <laughs> to say hi. So James was our Siegmund um, in the festival this year. Um, and for my answer to the question, the for me, the practicum was all the bits that I want in the other um programs like this the time that you want in between so quite often you're doing these programs and you're in a coach and then you're in a rehearsal and then you've got to go and work with the language coach and you know it's all about putting on a show we'd already put on a show we'd put on two shows we'd put on a load of concerts we'd done the whole festival together and then we had the time to take in and work afterwards um which is always the bit i'm craving i don't if you've ever done any of these like really fast summer programs and they're amazing and you you get to meet so many people but you there's just that niggle in that aria or there's just that something somewhere that you really want an hour to work on and to have time to do that and that's what the practicum in in terms of singing time and space <laughs> that's what it gave me um that i've not found in other places um and yeah, to do that in the Lattice um, it was just great. You're on an actual stage in a big theatre. Like, how often do you get to coach like that? <laughs> like, there's not that many theatres that you can just get in and be on the stage that many times and get used to that feeling of being exposed in that space. So that was really great as well. Just like echoing that intensely, like exactly what Wendy described of like, you go through any production, whether it's like a summer program or just a show. And like, I think like as singers, we all kind of know that moment where we're like, oh, I just got it. Like you just like got your, your fingernail on onto the thing that you wanted. And then it's over and you have to kind of move on. Um, and with this, uh, several of the things that I know that each of us was like leaning into, we had just touched in, in the show, either our, um, like a part of our technique that was really exciting or a set of characters that was really exciting or 
a a habit as performers that we needed to kind of clean out and examine. Um, I know, like to, be, to overshare on, on my part, um, one of my big discoveries in the practicum and in general was, was uh, my tendency of just saying, oh, I can do that. Um, that like the kind of like people pleaser tendency that got really built on when I was doing mezzo things. I'm like, no, no, I can, I can sing that kind and also that kind and I can, I can, I can do that. Um, and realizing that like I was doing that during the run of the shows, I was being helpful. I was being very super useful. And I also like had just enough time to like do that and be tired and feel like, oh, I'm, this is this is a tiring way of moving through existence. And then to have the permission structure and this wonderful support of set of people to work on that, to examine like, why am I doing this? What does it feel like if I don't do that? What does it feel like to to learn from that experience and immediately be able to capitalize on it rather than kind of have to run away back to real life without getting to actually sit with the discoveries, good, bad, ugly, wonderful, all in between. So I have three words, grace, self-discovery, and patience. Um, I really appreciated being in a space where I had the opportunity to talk about my internal dialogue and people being able to tell me that is not true. So not believing my negative thoughts about myself and actually being in a space where I know people are being 100% genuine to me and they want the best possible outcome. Um, that was really a main struggle of mine. So with my experience, when we first had the practicum, we had the decision either to have an open session or a closed session. Open session, all the participants will be able to sit in and watch our coaching or close it off. And I chose to close it off because I was extremely um, uncomfortable and very self-conscious about everything. I had a lot of singer thoughts, a lot of negative thoughts that I'm just not that good enough. And I do not want to embarrass myself. And honestly, now I love making mistakes and I love embarrassing myself because that is a part of the process. And I think every singer needs to have the opportunity where a space is available for them that it's okay to make mistakes, not that everything has to be perfect. And because I said so, because the real question is, who said that? Mm -hmm. I'm just like glowing currently at the moment because just like as Jeremy's talking about like, oh, I'm not good enough for these things. Like, I remember hearing her singing these things for the first time and just all of us are sitting there like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> just all of us are like what is happening what is happening why wasn't she letting us listen to this before oh my god oh my god like I, i'm on the verge of tears now remembering the sensation so like but but it's that thing where like we're so used to our coachings coming from this space of like tiny tiny nitpicky fault fi finding and like there's a place for that i guess maybe um but the magic of of getting to hear people like or well, hear me when she's saying like oh making a fool of herself or like is it Oh my God, <laughs> like it's that the, that freedom showed up in this gorgeous sound that we were so privileged to get to hear. I'd like to say a couple of things, if I may. Um, so I, I'm I'm Hugh, the conductor, not the singer, and. Um, and I'm just so present to that whatever you brought in, each of you, each of you four participants in, in last August, um, you, at a guess, you left with some resolution about whatever you came with as a concern, but actually a whole pile of unexpected results as well that you might have only been able to start to define kind of on site with the, th you know, a day or two in, you know, stuff that you really only discover in in real time. And I, I say this because I'm just so present to the different things that the, the, the different way you've you self described, you know, I'm, I'm traveling back in time now rather than reporting on you now. So uh, one of you basically decided in the course of the thing to to learn a role, another one 
described what it would you know was was in a fairly active in investigation of your relationship to what the FARC system has imposed on you, the labels that you've been handed. And from my point of view, in you creating these explorations of frankly very familiar things in a, in a singing artist's life, right? Uh, as you undertook in this environment, those very particular explorations, you, you got quite astonishing unexpected results For, forgive me if it sounds as though i'm trying to explain you i'm really not i'm talking about actually a takeaway that i got from from the way you were you know in real time back then and in, in some cases it amounted to this this even if you describe self-describe any of you self-describe as well i got a new level of self-confidence it's it's a level of self-confidence that is actually not private it's mm. it's a level of self-confidence that kind of Who's that? Who's I did not know about that person who has already paid money to participate in the program, and we've got to know actually fairly well already. Uh, so it's it's there's I, I you know I, I think what I'm really trying to say it it is a place where we can't guarantee, but I think there's a really high likelihood that anybody who does it will get some sort of breakthrough result or results through participating in addition or not to or not getting at all you know the, the 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 types of results that they come in with you know i want my this or that to be better or blah, blah, blah. um yeah and to, to, to me that, that, that that's at the heart of being a performing artist is this is this sense of relationship to self and then inhabiting what we call a role you know and gosh, it's 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 so stunning to be in that environment. And the other thing, um, uh, perhaps related to that, is what a group endeavor it is. So I'm not sure words like support are sufficient for the nature of the, you know, uh, relationships that 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 you know we're not applauding ones. Good job. Yeah, great, great. We're not really doing that right that there's this place of really attentive listening and what artist doesn't want that right that's at the heart of what we do is creating the environment us creating the environment in which other people willingly listen to us right and so that's just it's just exquisite that um um that I don't know, even now that that's perhaps one of the most vivid brightly colored sort of realms of takeaway from that very intense period. Thank you. Anyone else want to take a stab at the at the question? What is the practicum? <laughs> or uh, what a, a, a sort of parallel question I wrote down was, how did you deal with the fact that we didn't give you a curriculum and in, in mm. fact told you that there isn't a curriculum? You know, how, what was that like for you? <laughs> so, like most of us, I had, you know, the things I wanted to examine or the things that I wanted to address. And by the time we got through the festival, I had more than explored those and grown and felt like, okay, this is great, mission accomplished. And then I got to start the practicum. So um, besides a tiny little bit of panic of like, well, this is a lot of growth, I'm ready for a pause. Um, it was it it was intense without a curriculum it was vulnerable to all share um and it was very very surprising how much we all grew in such a short time because there was no agenda except what came up so okay well there's this thing okay well then let's talk about that tomorrow or let's talk about that tonight there's what about this other thing oh yeah that applies to what i'm doing too it it was um 
absolutely everything was relevant because it was coming from what we needed as a group. And a, a big part of that was the fact that we were all in the festival. I know I keep saying this, but for anyone who's watching who doesn't know this, we all were part of the Wagner in Vermont festival beforehand. So we were either cast in roles or we were covers or we were covers who then went on and we all had a place in that festival so we were rehearsing together we were building set together we were <laughs> fixing costumes together uh, we're sharing dressing rooms together and performing together before we started the practicum so we then suddenly had all of this cast this incredible cast left and there's just a few of us in town so we're dealing with post-show blues which are pretty heavy <laughs> and then going deeper into what we'd already been working on so we had a really common language to work on straight away we could refer to different things that had happened um but we didn't we'd already done the like let's do let's show everyone what we've got you know, that's, we can prove that we can do this job. That was already done. That wasn't even a question. Um, it was now, okay, where do we go from, from this? What's next? And how do we get further than we've been in the festival? So I think that was so important. That, that was one of the things too, when we were planning before the festival, what we wanted to do, everybody was like, we want to sing ensembles. We want to perform. We want to do this concert together. And then we were all involved in Die Valkyra and covering and singing Valkyries. And we got to do like really big ensemble music. And we came out of that and went, yeah, okay. I, I don't want to do that anymore. And we just decided no, no concert. We'll work on our own rap. We, we had a fantastic ensemble experience and we were ready to do something else. And so the curriculum changed and what we were doing, what we were working on changed. I actually did not mind not really having an agenda. Um, now I'm in a space where I kind of just go with the flow. And I love that instead of just being a planner. I mean, obviously I'm organized in different aspects, but instead of e expecting something to happen, I enjoy just allowing myself to experience, experience it without expecting anything from it. Oh, to like piggyback on that real hard. Um, that kind of the going with the flow. This is not my 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 highest skill set. Like there, I can adapt relatively quickly, but like it's, just, it's not a default setting. Um, so but that sense of, OK, we're going to we're going to follow this and the sense of not being particularly afraid of timing happening in a different way than you expected. Um, Actually, one of one of my like most treasured conversations that happened with me uh, with Jenna over the over this program was, I just I had had this kind of internal dialogue for so much of my life, like oh yeah no I'm the person where, who like gets there a little too late or like things happen like I just I just I miss it I just like barely miss whatever the opportunity is something goes wrong, um, and like that's okay I've made peace with that, and Jenna just kind of asked the question of like what if, what if things happen exactly when they're supposed to. Um, and like the radical revolution that that caused like in that moment for, for me as a singer. And then a week later when we were like trying something else out, it's still in the practicum. And then when I got home and got into a competition and then didn't, and then actually had a flight be missed that I couldn't make it to that competition. All of these things that in a previous version of the story that I was telling about myself as an artist or any of these things, would have been this big confirmation of like, ah, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. Ah, uh, maybe you're just like, you're destined to not get to do the thing. You're not, you're not destined to do the thing, but let's be real. All of us are, who are in this industry, but also, especially on this program, we're doing it and we're doing it at this age and at this level, because we know we're supposed to do it. We know something about what we're supposed to do. And yet to have that constant dialogue in the back of your head of like, mm, did this rejection, did this bad timing mean that you don't get to do it? um it's exhausting it like it's just this like constant exhaustion of like you maybe you won't get to do the thing and to suddenly have the freedom that this practicum granted of like oh, oh okay maybe it happened exactly on time and it, like that doesn't mean things aren't disappointing or hard and it doesn't mean that it, like you don't want things that don't happen when you when you think they're going to happen but something about the flexibility and the support of this program and of these individuals that i'm currently so delighted to be seeing again um unlocked that in 
in your life in my life when I got home I was like oh okay maybe that's that was disappointing but like maybe it's happening exactly the right time so on um you are now off mute yeah <laughs> so uh a theme that I'm hearing uh that we Jen and I were possibly not fully conscious of while it while the practicum was going on what i've written down here is um how how, how do we and re-enter a stream of music biz practices after this sort of extraordinary and wonderful and transformative time we've had in in in, in the practicum i i don't i'm pretty sure that none of us felt Okay, th th this is great. Now we got Monday morning ahead of us. I, I, I think part of what we all created in our different ways was, um, you know, really taking on how do we sort of reemerge from this into a world that probably isn't going to agree much with the stuff that we've got in there. You know, we've been told already that we're this, that, the other, and it doesn't quite work for the music biz or the, the opera world or something. And here's what we've got to work on. So anybody have anything to say about sort of the interface of the practicum experience with what rather poorly people call the real world, you know, <laughs> uh, out there? Interfacing between practicum and what comes next, the real world. I would say one thing for me, it's just living in my truth and not letting other people's opinions define, define who I am. Great topic we talked about, what is a diva? What would a diva do? <laughs> so I try to, I, I think about that because we, I mean, we, we talked about multiple people who we think are divas. We had a negative outlook on divaisms and we turned it into how we would create it. So for me, I try to be a diva as much as I can. I try to live in my truth as much as I can because when it comes to being a diva, you really don't care about people's opinions and people are going to respect you for being yourself. They might not like you, but they will respect you for that. And I think for me, just living in my truth and going through this program helped me realize that. One of the things for me, um, which is a very basic thing, jumping straight into the next show and um, <laughs> dealing with a whole new set of people, a whole new scenario, a completely different setup. Um, actually having these people here in this group that I just kind of messaged when I was like, you know, this is how things are going and, you know, things are different. And um, it was very odd moving from the festival we'd done and then the practicum literally back into the real world of how other things work and every show you do is going to be different um every show every cast that you meet is going to be different um but the the impact that the practicum had made such a difference on how i then approached a new setup and a new show and i knew i had these people <laughs> to just message and just say you know this, I'm struggling with this right now. Um, and there'd just be this message that came back that was like, hey, you know, you've got this, it's fine. And it was never, it was never a case of like looking for advice from people. It was like Jeremy said, it was just having that reassurance that you were doing the right thing. You were always doing the right thing. Um, but sometimes it's difficult to hold on to that. Um, and so from that is this idea that we're three months on now, but you have to keep working on it. It's not, it, it doesn't just happen. It, it's not something that you can just learn in these two weeks. What we got was a bunch of tools and a big explosion of change. And then 
it's up to us to keep that going and every decision that you make after that and every every time you think okay this is an opportunity that i could jump into um you're then thinking of it with this like new new way of looking at everything like is does this align with what i want is this um the person that i think i want to be um and having that confidence to say yes or no to those things backed up by a little message <laughs> That you can just say, what do you think of this for me? You know, is this is this a thing that you think suits me? Or, you know, just a little laugh, a little reminder of what we did. Um, that community has been invaluable to me. He didn't leave. He uh, the dog was barking. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy, um, who is also part of the practica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Short for Z uh, read. <laughs> yes, good for him. Uh, no, so what what are you saying of like the the community and the like people like knowing and rooting for you and having that kind of like yeah you can do do this yeah you got this, um, but it not coming from a place either of like I'm trying to figure out the exact right way to phrase this, but like I think in this industry we have this kind of understanding like oh. If people say nice things, they must not mean it. Or if people, or, so the only way for things to work is to just like get a really thick skin, like get rhino skin of like, and just accept critiques all the time, all the time, receive that kind of criticism. Um, and one of the things that's really striking about this that is not like the real world is you don't get that. Like that, like for the most part, unless you specifically asked for a specific flavor of, of feedback, you just had a bunch of really enthusiastic faces of people who were really attentively listening to you and like clearly having visceral reactions to whatever you were doing, but they weren't going to say anything unless you asked for it. Um, and because of that, you kind of get this, this sense of, yeah, I, I have people on my team. I have the most supportive, loving people that I could possibly ask for in this. And also, because I know that, because I know I have like a Facebook message away is Wendy when I can be like, oh my God, this thing is happening. And Wendy will send me a ridiculous gif of something from Ice Age. Um, <laughs> um, that is an allusion to something that happened over the course of our, our, our program. I know that if someone make, if I ha went, came out of a coaching and someone felt the need to aggressively critique, or if I sang for a church and somebody said something that didn't register as particularly sincere, Neither of those things mattered, not because Wendy's opinion of me existed, but because my opinion of me existed and you have this support system that's there. Um, and that that's so like going back into the real world, it's not that the real that the real world um, is this thing that we have to fight against or this thing that like we will magically trans like will we'll cease to exist, but it is you kind of go back into it with. I don't know. With, with a raincoat? I don't know what's the best way of putting that. But just that like, you're like, yeah, I'm, I have, I have, I have a raincoat. This is great. It may still be raining, but it, I have a raincoat. That's oh, my image. Yeah, one of the, one of the things that Hugh and I will say over and over is we don't have answers for you. We have questions for you. But we don't really, I mean, here as a coach, she might have some answers for him. <laughs> but, you know, it's more it, in, in it, you know, in the way that uh, uh, we're not we're not a young artist program. Right. I mean, uh, share me is the youngest, but it's not this isn't really designed for people who are just coming out of you know, a, an undergrad program or even just coming out of a grad program. Right. It's like you want a couple of years in there to kind of try things out and figure out who you are going to be as an artist and that's kind of where we're where we're aiming you know we're not aiming at the the nuts and bolts of the how to sing or the what to sing or the you know the where to sing like a lot of people have questions about you know which ladder they should get on to climb <laughs> to climb into the right position. We don't have any of those answers. Um, so, you know, we're not famous. We don't know famous people. We're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna get you connections and like, you know, launch you into an international career. 
Um, but what I hope we can do for everybody is ask the right questions so that you can create your own artistic life. You can, you can create it on your terms and, you know, f actually be fulfilled <laughs> as a singer. Is there anything you want to add to that? I, he was like, no, making sure the dog doesn't bark over there. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Ziggy duty suddenly. <laughs> you, 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 can, you can picture it. At least four so people who are listening to this can, can, can picture this. Um, I don't know. The, the meta in the bit that I just overheard is to do with us all dealing with the satis dissatisfactions we can barely admit. Right. Of course, we have to be well prepared. Of course, we got to have a nice stage smile. Of course, we got to be all buffed up and ready to go when opportunity knocks. Right. All of that. And at what cost? What are we suppressing as as we present all that? And we do present all, and mostly we authentically present all of that. And then there's the examination of what have we had to swallow, suppress, you know, minimize um kind of kind of gently kill or perhaps violently kill you know along the way for for for, for that to happen i mean that, that that's real for me boy is that real for me which makes it in, in in my case kind of really easy to talk about right because i i've i'm at a point in life where i can acknowledge that is the case for me if i can acknowledge that and i suspect this is all true for for, for you at, at this point as well it's it's the acknowledgement of the dissatisfactions that allows us to create something new. It's not kind of polyannerizing it or putting on a good face. That that that's the bit that actually kills the creativity. And you know, you, you can probably hear in the way I'm speaking. You know, that there's, there's a sense of incredible um, privilege in being in a group of people who share with this depth of you know self revelation self understanding and it's not it's not it's not nobody's forcing your hand and probably um uh, i hope there was no pressure for for any of you to share anything that, that you didn't want to share but when it is willingly shared i i'm i'm here to tell you that the 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 the, the, the movement towards a new set of goals is it, it's it's so vivid it's so clear it's a it's so sort of illuminating and brilliant as as, as well i want to jump on to what he was just saying and say that the other thing that happened during the practicum which doesn't happen through most programs training programs of this sort is that human jenna actually took part in all of their questions and activities as well every time we sat down for a conversation it wasn't a case of they would ask us and we would answer it was a case of let's do this as a group and having that literally leading by example um was so important and you know the work never stops so that was still happening for them um jenna was also taking part singing when there was time on stage when when somebody didn't want to coach for that hour we you know we had some time before lunch um they were also working together and showing us how that worked and what that was like um, and that was so different to see people who were leading you in one sense, also being your colleagues and being part of what you're trying to do and what you're exploring and exploring their own artistic life in that as well. It was really powerful for us. I think, I don't think anyone would say that it wasn't. <laughs> no, just to like, again, aggressively piggyback the the leading by example and the kind of modeling of this, like, so uh, with his question of like, how do you go back into the real world? Um, part of it was just the knowledge that the real world doesn't have to be the way you've been taught it is whatever that means to you uh that you don't have to coach the way you've been taught to coach you don't have to learn music the way you've been taught to learn music you don't have to sing only the roles that look exactly the way you're supposed to it doesn't have to be like it might be you might decide actually i slot very nicely exactly into tatiana Troyanis's little fox system and we're gonna go great i don't but <laughs> um, but just watching watching and participating in creating an artistic life um is 
is instructive and then getting to try on different versions. So try on what does it look like to do the thing that you thought, oh, this means I'm a bad musician. So I, I will again admit to like, I did the thing that meant time it was a bad musician. I learned an aria in front of people like repetitor style with you, and it is still probably the most correctly learned thing that I've ever learned. I it's great. It's accurate. It is actually accurate. Um, and I was so clear going into it, it was like, oh, can't do that. That means you're a bad, bad musician. You're very bad at learning music if you do that. Um, and what I found is then that freed me up when I went into into coachings afterwards of like, oh, no, I I knew I learned this so I can coach all the things that I actually want to coach. Um, as opposed to being a little bit afraid all the time that this thing that you're this part of your artistry, this part of your person needs to stay shoved down into a corner. Um, watching Hugh and Jenna lead by example, like, no, you, you, you as an artist and you as a singer and you as a person are the same thing. There is not a divide between those. Anything else that anyone wants to share before we before we wrap this up? Last words. <laughs> Hugh and Jenna will help you discover your light. That was them. Um, I think everyone that participated in the program found a version of themselves that they never thought existed. And I know I'm still in the process of still discovering that, but I I'm extremely appreciative to be in an environment where I know people actually care about my well-being and they wish the absolute, be absolute best for me and everyone without a sense of controlling us. You are giving us the controller to discover ourselves, to discover what we believe in, and I am truly grateful for that. little Thanks. something from me um as, as i sort of both participate and listen to what we're all doing um there's something about that i, I, I want to I, I want to sort of encapsulate something in a phrase that will sound a little bit like this that unqualified goodwill and acceptance creates results right it's it's, it's not that you feel better it's actually, or that I feel better, it's, it's actually that you emerge with a transformed skill set, a transformed ability to bring what, you know, what's there for you to bring, but at a palpable, generous new level, right? So, um, yeah, I, I just want to sort of swish away any sense of woo woo in, in, in what we're talking about, right? That the woo woo is aimed at extraordinary artistry, which is what you come in with, right? And the communication and the reception of that. So um, that's 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 my, my closing thought. It's results. I've put the links to all the um, deets in the uh, comments section on the video as well. So anyone who wants to know those deets, they are there. Um, and just to reiterate the um, the thing that we now have as the tagline for the practicum, you're already a fully formed artist. Anyone who's coming in might have all these plans and ideas of what they want to work on. But if you know that you arrive and you're already a fully formed artist, you know, that's where you start. You're already accepted as that. Um, so come with plans and expect to throw them all in the recycling bin and <laughs> all those scores are going to be recycled because um, it's all going to change and you're going to find out something new. It was so great seeing you all. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, Facebook, Facebook world, if you're out there, you know, check out the check out the deets as wendy says on our website and um and if you are interested in applying for the practicum do it soon we've got a lot of uh we've got a lot of people that have applied already so thanks
Bye. Lots of love.